Well, today is day four of Build Your Own Guitar Body class at Texas Toast Guitars. Actually, yesterday. This is today. You know what I mean. You're gonna see some cool stuff today. Um, how the copy carver works. So that's like human powered CNC before there were CNC machines to carve the top on a Les Paul style guitar. Very, very cool uh, contraption and method of doing it. Uh, so you're gonna see that. You're also going to hear Matt from Texas Toast Guitars talk a little bit about uh, wood cuts. So quarter sawn versus flat sawn versus riff sawn versus live sawn, I think, are a few of the examples and why you would pick some and some myth busting about what means what uh, when you're picking guitars and what you see. Very interesting stuff. A little bit of an extension from our other live video that we did with Dan um, from Guitar Wood Experts. So that was, a, it's a really kind of a cool practical, check it out, it'll be cool. And then we start assembling the Les Ply. And I will tell you um, that the, well, just. Okay, so Doug is going to go and buy some lumber for his guitar neck, and I said, what you want to get is some eight-quarter mahogany, unless you want to be really cool, and then get some 12-quarter mahogany. And so Doug goes, well, why the hell would that be super cool? So I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you uh, some of my, my wood, how to buy it, why to buy it, and where to buy it uh, uh, presentation. So as you guys know, if you chop a tree down, and look at it from the end, it looks like a circle and it has these annular rings like that. So there's a bunch of different ways that wood is cut at the mill. Remember yesterday when Dan was saying he has to go and tell the guys the best ways to cut them? So um, there's a couple different ways that, that lumber is cut. Um, one would be flat sawn one would be a uh, quarter sawn. One would be um, live sawn, I believe is what is what they call that. And there's there's a bunch of other different ways that you can do that too. But let me walk you through some of the ways and some of the yields that you get with each different style of, of lumber. So a, a flat sawn board, get a load of the perspective here. Ooh. A flat sawn board will look from the end like this, ideally. Okay, and here's the growth rings that you get. And then usually it looks a little bit like this on the end and is straight through here. This is cathedraling. Okay, so this would be a flat sawn board. Um, you can also have a vertically grained board, which a lot of people think is exactly the same as quarter sawn, but it is not. And I'll show, uh, it's not necessarily. Okay, and the grain will go this way, and you'll get cathedraling on this side. 
okay? So what happens is when you cut down these trees, you've got your log here, and here are the growth rings. If you've ever seen someone who has one of those chainsaw mills, and they've got like this great big chainsaw, and they, they slide the lumber through there, yeah. that's what... That's flat saw, right? Nope. No, this would be like live sawing, okay? It's the easiest way to do it because the wood goes through the same direction, you just scooch the saw blade down. So you can see here, some of these boards will yield a flat. Some of these boards will look like this, flat sawn. But when you get to here, some of these boards will look vertical, okay? So that's live sawn, I believe is the term for it. I'm probably wrong. We'll find out in the comment section below. <laughs> okay, um, now flat sawn is they take a chunk right through there and it's flat. And then they flip the board 90 degrees and they take a chunk through there and it's flat. And they keep going like this. So all the boards have grain, end grain, that looks like that, okay? That's flat sawn. So it's, when Dan was saying that he has to tell people, you, as a guitar maker, you don't want this. You want vertically oriented grain as much as you can get. So Dan's like, no, do not flat saw it. We want it, you either quarter saw it or live saw it so we can get some of those, that vertically oriented stuff. Hardly anyone wants to quarter saw Lumber. What that actually means, here's our annular rings. You cut the log in quarters, hence the term quarter sawing. And you actually take chunks out like this so that each, and you, it really doesn't actually look like that. It actually looks more like this. There's a lot of wood wasted with quarter sawing. Because what you want is you want the board end grain to look as vertical as humanly possible. So you can have a vertically grain piece of wood that isn't necessarily quarter sawn. You know what I mean? But, that's, but a real quarter sawn board is actually divided into fours and, and has, is, is milled such that all of this stuff here wasted is wasted. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Mythbuster Dylan talk tone stuff. Yeah. There's probably a large percentage of wood and people that walk up to a neck and go, oh, that's a quarter sawn piece of wood. And it might not be. Well, it might not be because, because it could be. Yeah, so this is, this is vertically oriented paduk. It may or may not have been quarter sawn. But a lot of times somebody could walk up to that, see that end grain and go, oh, it's probably quarter sawn and it might not be. Well, and, and what usually, now, the, here's, here's where the Dylan Mythbuster, Dylan Talks Tone Mythbuster really should come in. <clears throat> there's quarter sawn, and then there's riff sawn, and then there's vertical grain, and there's angled grain. Oh, yeah. This would actually be a riff sawn board. This would actually be a quarter sawn. Okay, but everybody yeah. thinks vertical grain is quarter sawn, but actually the, the people who use the most quarter sawn material are in fact table makers. Uh, okay, now why would that be? So if you've got grain that's running on a bias, all right, get ready for the, get ready for art class. Wait a minute. That's not good enough for art class. If you've got grain that's oriented on a bias, we need, we need more, more perspective this way, okay. And you have grain that is oriented vertically or flat. When you're, when you're vertical or flat, you have nice straight grain running on one side. Remember what I said about cathedraling on the other side? Mm -hmm. What would happen on this is you'll get nice straight grain 
on all sides. And table makers and chair makers really love this because they all look the same. Oh, so that would be like a post of a table. Exactly. For example. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now back to Doug's original question. Why would I want that? So hardwood is sold by board foot, which is a measurement of volume, not by length. So what we're looking for is 144 cubic inches of volume would be one board foot. So that could be one inch wide by 12 inches long, or it could be by, by yeah, one inch wide by 12 inches, uh, or one inch thick by one inch wide by one inch long, one board foot, or it could be two inch wide by six inch, or two inch thick by six inch wide yeah, by six. Yeah, yeah. So it's sold, it's sold in board foot. Now that's before the board has been milled. So the reason they call it four quarter, eight quarter, 12 quarter, 16 quarter. Um, so uh, four quarter would be one inch thick, right? Eight quarter would be two inch thick, 12 quarter, three inch thick. Since most lumber is flat sawn and the grain kind of looks like this, if you could get 12 quarter mahogany, you could glue the fretboard onto this side and make your neck here and you'd have vertically oriented grain that was thick enough to make a neck um, without having to buy quarter sawn lumber. And why you would want vertically oriented grain is you see, so this is a, this is a quarter by eighth by two foot metal rod. It's easy to flex it this way. It's more difficult to flex it this way. So if you imagine that was one of the grain pieces in your wood, it is theoretically possible that, well, it's probably, it's probably absolutely true that it flexes less this direction than this direction. So if you make your neck so that the grain is oriented vertically, that's a cool way to make a neck. In reality, it's probably not that big of a deal. You know, I mean, a lot of, yeah, yeah. You've got a big chunk of rosewood glued to it and you got a truss rod, but chicks dig it. <laughs> and isn't that why we do this? And people can nerd out in Facebook groups and stuff about totally it. Totally geek out in really Facebook. Matters. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool stuff, huh? So, uh, we got the tuners on the left ply, we got the nut in, we got the pickups in. Uh, they're not screwed down yet. Everything's wired. Um, everything's basically done. We just gotta do a little bit of fiddling. So, one of the things, <laughs> everybody thinks, oh, this is just some joke of a guitar, right? But we're, 
this is a, a real instrument. Like, it is properly good. It's got Texas Toast name on it. The pickups have my name on it. I mean, this is proper stuff. However, just because it's made out of plywood doesn't mean that it's easy. Um, even, we've had to, like, modify our thought process of how to finish this guitar along every step of the way. Every piece of that guitar has had to have some work put into it to make the application to plywood. Um, it is very difficult to work with plywood. Uh, you wouldn't think so. You would think that it's just junk wood and you could throw it together and do whatever you want. But, uh, it is much more challenging than than you would think. So we're putting a lot of time into making sure that it, it's right. And so today we've got to do a couple little tweaks and then I'm hoping that at the end of the day today, like I'm not hoping, we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna play this guitar today. And I think uh, on the five o'clock Friday night, have a beer with Matt video on Texas Toast Guitars and we'll actually do a side-by-side -side double live gonzo with Dylan and Tox Tone like we did the other night. Um, we'll do a reveal video on this and we'll play it and we'll talk about the particulars of it and everybody wants to know how much it weighs and all that kind of stuff. So we'll figure all that out today and I will get with you later this afternoon. So make sure you stay tuned.